Tonight, Andrew Desjardins is the owner and operator of Mr. Drew and His Animals 2, located in Lewiston. He joined us in the 207 studio with a few of his reptile friends. Now, Mr. Drew says while many people think of reptiles as easy, low-maintenance pets, there's a lot you need to know before getting one. We started by asking him about the first of the animals he brought with him. Well, we have a Euromastix. This is one of those pet lizards. They're kind of cute. They got the chubby little cheeks here. They're actually an herbivore, so they're a plant eater. Um, and they like fruits and things like that. They actually don't need water in their cage. Actually, having water in their cage could be detrimental to them. Okay. Where they live, it's very arid, very dry, and they take all their water from the fruit and stuff they eat. Where do now, they live? They live in Algeria, parts of Africa, Saudi Arabia, and there they're eaten. They're actually a food animal. And so they have these spiky tails they can use to slap with, though it really doesn't hurt. It's more just enough to get a sensitive animal's nose awesome. maybe out of the way. The um, pattern is so yeah, the, cool. The pattern is beautiful on them and stuff. But the thing is with this lizard too, it also demands a high temperature, more than most people can keep. And so they like it 120 degrees or more. Uh, and even higher in some spots of their basking cage. So it's not a good beginner lizard, though they're very common. A lot of people might opt for them because they're not eating insects and rodents and, you know, they're eating fruit. That's a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. But most people can't keep them warm enough and that's where they fail. Mm -hmm. Why don't we move on to our next one? And as you do that, we'll reiterate that there are challenges to having any of these animals that Drew brings on as pets. You've got to know what you're doing yeah. before you acquire the animal and taking care of it is a real responsibility. Now, what is this one? This guy's Lefty, and Lefty here is, <laughs> he's about maybe 16 years old, and he's called Lefty because he has a neurological disorder. He actually leans to the left, you can see him. He uh, is very old for this. It's a dwarf pixie frog. And so now what happens is they might sell this in the store, and again, it's a pixie frog. A lot of people think pixie, they think, Tinkerbell, or they mm -hmm. think, you know, Walt Disney, uh, you know, take, pick Tinkerbell small. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to stay small. This species of frog right here will. This, like I said, is the dwarf pixie frog. Now the adult, the, uh, the standard pixie frog can grow to six pounds. It's the second largest frog in the world. Let me get this guy out to show you. Here it is. And this, okay. this is a Pixie frog. So if you don't know which one you're getting, and a lot of times the stores don't know because you can buy this frog little. And so if you don't know which species it is, you might end up with a frog. This one weighs two pounds right now. He can grow to six pounds. And at this size, he's already eating small rats. I have three oh, lovely. words. Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, he's eating, he can eat this little frog. He would eat <laughs> rats, snakes, lizards, birds, uh, and they get enormous. They have bony so ridges in their mouth. So again, you might think you're getting this, and you might actually be getting this. Okay, oh my gosh. that's obviously crucial to know. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's kind of a scary looking Big difference. frog. <laughs> I mean, normally I like frogs. That one, unsettling. Six okay. pounds, it gets bigger than your head. <laughs> it's amazing. That, okay, that's my new rule. I'm not getting any frogs for a pet that are, that are bigger than my head. <laughs> that's a good rule of thumb. Uh, here's another animal I won't be getting as a pet. Hmm. What have you got this here, This here is a black milk snake from Panama. It is the largest of the milk snake species. This is Sonny, he is 20 years old. He actually has a cataract in one eye. Uh, he is very old for a milk snake. Very shiny, very soft. So a lot of people think snakes are slimy because of that iridescent shine, and they're not. They're very smooth. Very smooth. And uh, very dry. And so he is related to our eastern milk snake that we have here in Maine. We have nine species of snakes, and um, the eastern milk snake is one that can eat 4,500 ticks in one season. Oh, so they're a beneficial smokes. species. Um, can and Sam hold it? Sure. You always yeah. ask me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, if you don't want to, I will. It's but like perfect. One of us ought outfit. to hold the snake, and I think it ought to be you. <laughs> How you convenient. Do it, you do it so well. <laughs> Hello? So Here, these, come see Rob. These, this is as big as he gets. I've brought other milk snakes on, and they don't get quite as big. This is the largest of the milk snakes. The ones in Maine can get up three, four feet. Um, and they're red, orange, black, right. they're different colored. So here in Maine, we call them milk adders as well, but they are totally harmless. General warnings or cautions on having this as a pet? 
Uh, just again, learning as much as you can about any animal. It doesn't matter if it's easy or not. I mean, working on cars is easy if you know what you're doing. I pop the hood and go, that's an engine. That's all I can tell you. So, you know, learning and, and not just relying on them, that it's easy uh, as an a excuse not to do your research. We're getting very cozy here, and he's blending. <laughs> so, you can see his cataract too. Hey, buddy. Very, very sweet though. Yes, oh yeah. Temperaments on these guys are very wonderful. Uh, when they're babies, they tend to be a little more defensive, Would just like because it's him? a defensive posture. But as they get older, they realize, oh, you're not hurting me, you're fine. Mr. Drew's operation in Lewiston is open seven days a week. If you'd like to visit and see some of the animals, he also does a number of visits to schools and camps all over the state to share his knowledge with kids. More information on our app and website. Coming up next,